the drive shaft let go and our fuel pump is mounted off the back of the camshaft um, right above the drive shaft between the driver's knees and apparently when the drive shaft let go it took the fuel pump with it. You were saying something about Rich Vogler got the drive shaft? Yeah, apparently uh, Rich Vogler threw the drive shaft out going down the front straightaway. It ended up in his lap. That's what we heard. Well, of course, those of us that have followed Gary Bettenhausen's career know it's been laced with great, great talent, but also some very terrible luck, a very scary situation here at Raceway Park this evening. Well, Steve, I think Gary would tell you, if you can't win, be spectacular. I don't think he wanted it to be quite that serious, but he bought a brand new car and a brand new sponsor, and they did make some headlines. You know, I was entirely wrong. I thought it was an oil fire. I thought the engine exploded. Uh, it makes all the sense to me now that with that fuel pump in the cockpit, that's where the fire was coming from. It broke a, a fuel fitting off, no doubt. I hope, I hope this Greg Staub walking back from his, his crash, he's all done apparently, he looks dejected. I hope, I hope this won't keep Gary out of the Hoosier 100 that comes up this Sunday night because the first night, the first time in a night race, I know he wanted to run that race and do well. And speaking about missing Hoosier 100, it's been a long time since Steve Chassis has missed one, hasn't it? That's right. I, I, <laughs> I had a streak of 14 in a row going. I would have been 15 this year. But Steve was injured in an Indianapolis car accident at the Michigan International Speedway a couple weeks ago. Is still laid up. Incidentally, a lot of questions about Eddie Horn from Defiance, Ohio. He was released from the hospital this week. He is headed home. Also, Red Stouffer has asked us to pass this along. He was involved in a crash in a preliminary. They took him to the hospital. He said, tell my wife, though, I am okay. I'm all right, honey. Here we go with the start again. Another good, clean start so far. It's always a question mark to get through the first lap on a restart because everybody's charging hard. Here goes Rich on the inside. I don't know if the V6 has enough power to get by. It doesn't appear to. Now we're back on the end car. I, I don't see any smoke coming out of the engine compartment, so apparently they got that problem fixed up and dried up. The red number seven is Dave Dernwald from Tiffin, Ohio. The yellow number 20 from Phoenix, Arizona is Bob Fry, actually Wickenburg, Arizona, but I'm sure that more of you have heard of Phoenix than have heard of Wickenburg. Butler is holding on to a very comfortable lead at the moment. As soon as, well, here, almost. I think as soon as Vogler gets by Alderson, and it's not going to be easy because, because Mark's running a good, strong, fast race. When he gets by, we'll see how fast Butler is. Mark Alderson, who came to USAC in the 1970s, has never won a USAC Sprint Car main event. And it is truly incredible that in all those years, as competitive as he has run in sprint cars and in championship dirt cars, that he's never picked up one of these main events. Rich Vogler, on the other hand, has won 163 main events now in USAC, and he is really being put to the task to get around Alderson. He has got to use every single moment of his experience to get around Mark. See, what you're seeing here is a classic example of the momentum up top. Rich is faster if he was in the top group, but he has to get by on the bottom. And he just Looks might like he make it. He made it right there. He made it right there. I don't know whether Mark pushed a little bit or, or Rich just had a good, clean corner. But he sure made it by nicely. Well, this battle that was developing for a position between Alderson and Vogler, keep in mind, that's a battle between teammates from last week in the midgets because Alderson has been working as a crew member on Vogler's midgets this season, so he got in the backup car last week. Now he's catching Butler, and he's catching him very quickly. This is going to be, a, a, I think, a little, a little tough job to get by because uh, Butler, you know, he's won this thing twice. He wants to win another one. He just came back off an injury, and he has something to prove to himself. And as we told you that uh, Steve Butler has now led something like the last 60 laps in a row, but Vogler gets a nice fight on the inside of turn number four, and a rich Vogler looks like he's going to move into the lead. Sure looks that way. That, that car is hooked up extremely well. That's not uh, loose at all. And it's amazing how much horsepower that little uh, Buick V6 is making. And so Rich Vogler finally on seats Steve Butler from the throne. He has been on the throne of the Hoosier Hunter, or make that the Holman Classic for three years now. Here's a team race now. Hammond is trying to get by Hewitt. Hewitt looks extremely loose on the outside. Hammond just can't quite get by him. 
Steve, they are in the middle of eight cars. You can see up ahead, the very front car in line is Jerry Niemeyer. There is Jack Hewitt getting sideways coming out of turn number two. Those eight cars are seventh through 14th, and boy, they have been going at it. Tooth and nail for the last five or six laps. Jerry Niemeyer is running that preferred line about two-thirds of the way up the speedway. That's Frank Weiss, the former bodyguard for uh, Paul Newman. He is running right behind Niemeyer, and uh, you see Hammond darting down to the inside. Hammond makes that big swing to the inside, trying to get by. Remember, Hammond came from the back after the yellow flag, and right behind him you see the number 20 car, Fry. He was also in the back. Now, that is Jack Hewitt. Oh, I'm Actually, sorry. That's Jack Hewitt in the team car to Wayne Hammond. There is Eric Gordon. He won a heat race today. Now, there is that 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th place cars, Niemeyer. Hammond is now moved to 8th, and Frank Weiss is running in ninth. Now we're back to the 11th on back. Confusing to me. Well, the there are two team cars look exactly alike. They're both blue with the orange and yellow numerals, number 66. And then again, that's the mostly known for dirt tracking Jack Hewitt, Bob Fry, who's underneath him. What a great move. Bob just stuck like blue out, but just turned left and drove underneath him. Extremely quick pass. But you see how much faster Fry is. He's really pulling out on it. Oh, look at that tire smoke. That He's black, really loose. That black car right behind uh, Hewitt is the dirt tracker, Kevin Huntley. Now, we've not seen Kevin that often on pavement, but uh, he secured a solid ride for a night. He moved into the main event. Now, back up front, Volker continues to run first. The race is half over, 16 laps down. And Steve Butler is in an agonizing second place, but I think that he's slipping backwards. A good battle for third and fourth. There's good battles all over this racetrack. But this is, this is, uh, that's Mark Alderson, Mark Alderson. and uh, Gary Fidoa. Fidoa was the second fastest qualifier tonight, and Alderson had his best qualifying time of the year here at IRP. He is ninth in both IRP pavement points as well as overall points. And uh, Fidoa, who has really come on strong here at IRP in the uh, past couple of weeks, uh, has moved up to 12th in IRP points. Specialist basically from up in Michigan. And when they come down here to run Raceway Park, they really enjoy it because it's a very fast, very exciting racetrack. Gary Fidoa in car number 42 looks to the inside. Now he looks to the outside of Mark Allerson. Back to the inside again. Fidoa, like the dog wagging the tail, is trying to find a place where either Alderson is not strong or waiting for Alderson to make a mistake. And there it might be right there. Oh, no, not quite. Alderson is, is a, running a real smooth race. One of his better races that he's running here at Raceway Park. And uh, it's some other race at a different time. It might have been a, 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 a leading ride. That white car that you just saw pull in, the nose is sticking out there behind Jim Keeker's car, is Jim Mahoney. He had quite an adventure tonight. He did not qualify through a seat race. He had that exciting semi-feature. Did get into the main. And that was a, probably the best I've seen the Valvoline sprint car run in the whole series. Keeker gave it one heck of a ride tonight. Uh, Larry Fritz, who usually drives that car, has retired from sprint cars because after he got hurt, he decided he couldn't take the time away from his, ra his, uh, his uh, Just Jags business. And it just it makes more sense to him, he said, to work than to race. In 18 years, only two drivers have been able to win this race twice, Pancho Carter and Steve Butler. Rich Vogler has won it once, so the odds are against him. But boy, he looks bulletproof right this moment. 22 laps are down. Vogler leads. Butler runs second. There is third Mark Alderson and fourth Gary Fidoa. Neither one of those drivers has ever won a USAC Sprint Car main event. And unless something highly unusual occurs, it's not going to be tonight either. No, and I see something coming up here behind these two. Upcoming young Jeff Gordon to get back in this fray. He's going to be fighting for this, this spot in just about two or three laps. Jeff Gordon is 18 years of age. There is Vogler going to the inside of Frank Weiss. And now to Jerry Niemeyer. Those are top 10 cars. And Niemeyer, throughout the 1989 season, has been one of the people who has run the groove here the best. He is not an easy man to get around. He runs smooth. He runs straight. He runs fair. And uh, he helped a lot of people off to hold on to his position in tonight's main event. As, as good as he's running, it shows you how much better Rich's car is operating tonight. Rich is just driving through traffic like they're not even there. The car is hooked up so tight that it's just not.
not pushing. Once in a while, it might pop a little loose, but that's just because he's hard at the throttle. A Buick V6 underneath the hood of Rich Vogler. Rich Vogler, who is looking for look, look. wind number 164, he's beginning to smoke. It looks like it's, it's, it's I don't know, it looks like it could be a, an oil leak rather than a smoke that came out of that car. It was heavy through one and two. It doesn't pick up until it gets to the number four. He squirts out of the fourth corner. Could it be icing down that right rear? It's lap 26. And Wayne Hammond has suddenly appeared there in the battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Where in the world did Wayne Hammond come from? Well, he's been moving up from the back steady. I mean, he's, he came from that yellow from the rear and has come right to the front, and now he's got a clear track ahead. I'm looking for second place. 27 laps are down, and incidentally, if Vogler stays in first and Jeff Gordon finishes sixth or higher by our unofficial count, Jeff Gordon will still win the Hardy's Points Championship when this night and this year is over, so Gordon can still pull it off. The white flag is coming up for Rich Vogler. Does he have enough left to go one more lap? Well, apparently so. Either it's run out of the oil from the gearbox or whatever that was coming out. It's not coming out anymore, and the starter had the black flag in his hand. Is not going to give it to him. Just gave him the white flag, and he's coming around now to win his first ever Hullman Classic race. He's coming off the corner now. There, the checkered flag drops on Rich Vogler, who did an excellent job tonight. He outdrove everyone. His car was faster than everyone, and he won the race. He had set a brand new track record in qualifying, and he proved that it was absolutely no fluke as Rich Vogler is the 1989 Holman Classic winner. Our race here. Rich Vogler. We just saw you win a race on ESPN a year ago, and you've done this so many times in sprint cars and midgets, but money, 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 money with a capital M is still the name of the game if you want to go big time. Well, it is, Larry, and, and it didn't used to be that way. Uh, when I first got my start back in the, in the late 60s, it was, it was talent. Total talent was how you excelled, and nowadays it's, it's not necessarily all talent. <clears throat> a little bit of uh, uh, money, if you could bring a sponsor, or, or even just put your car owner in touch with a sponsor, that's a possibility. That's part of the, part of the game this, this, this time. Rich, you ran a lot of the Super Vs. Do you think that helped you with the Indy cars? Do you think there's any comparison? There's such a difference in horsepower and weight. Well, it helped a little bit. It, it would have helped a lot more if I could have done some road racing, a lot more road racing in the Super Vs, and then did some road racing in the Indy cars because I think that's where the most most uh, help would be from. Because I have done a little road racing, and it is different. I tell you, you have to keep track of 19 different corners and and uh, six different gear ratios, and have them all in the right gear in the right time at the right corner so that makes it a little more difficult than just uh, going around four corners and having fun. <laughs>